Hello, everybody, and welcome back for your weekly news breakdown. As always, I am Mateo311, and this is your channel for everything VR related. Like always, we'll recap everything amazing that transpired last week, prepare you for this week's new releases and updates, and finally round out the video with the most pressing or interesting VR topic to date. Today, we're talking about how Qualcomm is finally making AR a true possibility. We have a new VR studio with a proven track record and some big names on the team. My favorite tabletop VR title, Demio, has some great updates incoming. And surprisingly, this week has a lot of new puzzle titles to check out. Now, there are, of course, links and timestamps down in the description. But before we jump in, this video is brought to you by Kiwi Design, your one stop for all VR accessories. Are you looking for a Quest to Elite strap that won't suddenly snap on you? Or a face pad that won't irritate your skin? Well, Kiwi has you covered. They carry a large array of accessories from cable management systems to replacement facial covers. There are links in the description, and don't forget to use my affiliate code to help support this channel. Okay, so let's start things off with this week's release schedule. And first on the list is the Shores of Locky. Releasing in early access this Tuesday on both the Steam VR and App Lab platform, this narrative-driven puzzle title will have you traversing stunning environments and solving elaborate challenges. Ultimately, the Shores of Locky want you to escape the ordinary and create something extraordinary. It looks like there's some definite potential here, so I'm gonna have to check this one out. Now, next up is World of Mechs. 32 different mechs, 5 maps, 4 different online gameplay modes, a 20 mission single player campaign, and it's available for both the Quest 1 and Quest 2. So the only remaining question is, is it better than Vox Machina? Now hopefully I can answer that question, as I'm planning a review for when this game releases on Thursday. Now if you're looking for something more realistic, Manny Boxing VR is also coming this week. Now this is another early access release, but soon you'll be able to jump in the ring with Manny Pacquiao, practice your speedball and heavy bag skills, compete against AI characters divided by 5 difficulty levels, and then jump online and play against real opponents. Manny Boxing VR is striving for realistic physics, immersive sound, and fluid animations. Their goal is to be the most realistic boxing simulator, and we'll just have to wait and see how it stacks up against Creed Rise to Glory and Thrill of the Fight. Now, if contact sports aren't your style, maybe you'd rather drive a taxi instead in The Last Taxi. While this game does fall just outside of this week's release window, we did, however, just get confirmation of a May 31st release date. In The Last Taxi, you'll jump into a dystopian world where you are the last remaining human taxi driver. This narrative-driven adventure title has you conversing with a diverse group of passengers. You'll be forced to make morally challenging decisions as you learn more about this dying society. Now, overall, I'm extremely intrigued, but do not know what to expect from this title. So if you're interested in me reviewing this title or any other game we discuss in this video, please let me know down in the comments. Now, narrative-driven puzzle titles seem to be extremely popular this week, and we actually have two more to go over. The first one is The Last Clockwinder, which just dropped a new release date trailer. And again, we have another title that's leaving me quite intrigued. At the heart of this puzzle title, you'll be creating multiple clones that can and loop through a simple task. Link all of these clones together to solve intricate puzzles and ultimately restore an ancient tree to life. It reminds me a bit like Gravity Lab with some additional nuances and a nice fantasy spin. And in similar narrative-driven puzzler-style fashion, we have Aeolia. Aeolia is actually a sequel to last year's Rhythm of the Universe Ionia. And if you enjoyed that title, you can expect more of the same as this title continues the storyline of the original. Now, developers ROTU Entertainment are committed to helping the environment and a portion of this title's profits will be going to a climate conscious nonprofit selected by the ROTU social media community, just like they did for Rhythm of the Universe Ionia. Okay, so that covers all of our new releases and upcoming titles, but there are some additional game updates for us to discuss. My favorite VR tabletop RPG title, Demio, has some excellent updates on the way. For starters, we got a little tease that we will soon be able to paint miniatures inside of the title's social hub, The Heroes Hangout. Now, if you've ever played tabletop games before, you would know that painting miniatures can be a whole additional hobby. I was a Warhammer 40k gamer, and I most likely spent twice as much time painting as I did actually playing the game. So this is just an amazing touch and nod to tabletop fans. But even better, we are getting a brand new quest in the near future. Curse of the Serpent Lord will be the fourth quest to release, and it's also coming with some buffs to my favorite character, the Sorcerer. If you're yet to play Demio, it is a fantastic tabletop experience that's now playable on flat screen PC, the Quest, and PC VR. Resolution Games has continually dropped new updates for this title, and there is a lot more on the way. So basically what I'm saying is I highly recommend it. Now, while we're on the topic of game updates, the four-person co-op survival weapon crafting title Requisition VR will be getting a PVP mode. Currently in development and suffering from delays for multiple reasons, Requisition 
PlayStation VR looks like a truly unique and intriguing title with nothing else out there quite like it. You go around crafting weapons and traps from anything you could find, and then you'll have to try and survive an onslaught of incoming enemies. Now, eventually when this title releases, that zaniness will also be pushed into a PvP mode. I really enjoy the concept and hope this title eventually delivers. Speaking of delivering, the developers behind Warhammer 40k Battle Sister and Drop Dead have formed a new studio called Soul Assembly. Soul Assembly currently features over 30 developers, including veterans from Codemasters, Activision, and Take-Two Interactive. They're also still expanding with multiple open job positions. And even better news, they have two VR titles currently in the works. No news on what exactly those games will be, but it looks like we might have another zombie-themed title on the way. As a huge fan of Warhammer 40k, I hope they eventually work on a new title that hits a little bit harder than Warhammer 40k Battle Sister. Now, when it comes to things hitting hard, I usually think of new technology. And while VR is continually moving forward, it seems like AR is going nowhere fast. Now, there are multiple reasons for that, which I'm going to go over, but it looks like Qualcomm has overcome a major hurdle. Now, for some reason you're not familiar with Qualcomm, they are the hardware manufacturer that has made mobile VR a possibility. Their XR2 chipset was designed to check a lot of boxes that VR required. This includes the ability to drive a high resolution display, connect to multiple cameras, and then still have enough processing power left over to perform some six stop tracking and run some highly demanding games. I mean, honestly, we crap on the limited capabilities of the Quest 2 constantly, but it's actually a miracle that thing works at all. Now, AR just makes all of these issues that much harder. For starters, you have a much smaller form factor. Not only do the optics need to severely shrink, unlike a VR headset, you don't have anywhere to put your additional hardware and battery. But like the Vive Flow, AR devices would have to rely on a tethered device. But tethered devices are so 2018, and we are moving past that. So obviously we need a wireless solution, and once again, Qualcomm is delivering. Their latest AR reference design is not only including an XR2 chipset, but also their Fast Connect 6900 chip, which is equipped with Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3. This is designed to connect to an external device with latency as low as 3 milliseconds. Now, instead of putting all of the load on the XR2 chipset like the Quest 2 does, it would only be responsible for things like tracking. The heavy lifting could be provided by a computer, an external device, or even your cell phone. The current reference design has a 1080p per eye resolution screen running at 90 hertz. So this means that the hardware is basically where we need it to be, and products with mainstream prices could be available relatively soon. Now, just to clarify, Qualcomm will not be producing AR headsets. This is just a reference design that other manufacturers will use as a blueprint to build on top of. So we're not locked into 1080p screens and additional features could be included. But as we've also seen with VR, hardware is only half the challenge and you also need a robust software library. Well, luckily Qualcomm has us covered yet again with Snapdragon Spaces. This is their developer platform, where they currently have a $100 million fund, which will be used to help encourage content creators. They're also partnering up with T-Mobile and Square Enix. So maybe in the near future, when you go to get a new phone from T-Mobile, they'll bundle it with an amazing pair of AR glasses, and then you'll use all of that technology to fire up a version of Final Fantasy. Now, I don't know what it is about AR technology, but I find it much more exciting than VR. While my favorite pastime is gaming, and I believe VR will always excel over AR when it comes to this, there are just so many more practical applications for AR, and I want to live my life augmented. But maybe that's just me, so I'd love to hear what you guys think down in the comments. Do you even give a crap about augmented reality or is it just VR for life? But that was today's new VR news. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. If you're new here, consider subscribing. And as always, I'll see you guys on next time.